All right, guys, welcome back. We are at the end of the second section for this course, which means you guys have a basic understanding of Python. You actually have enough right now to build some basic programs. Now, you might be thinking, well, hold on, we didn't even do that much. That's That might seem like it's true, but we've learned some core principles and concepts here, as well as the language syntax so far. So uh, we currently know uh, how to create loops like while and if uh, or while and for loops we know the if else statement we know how to create strings and all the different types like booleans and numbers and we also know how to set variables uh, among some other stuff so what we're going to do right now is uh, for the project for this section we're going to put most of what we've learned in the uh, in this section and we're going to build a calculator program so I'm going to open up Chrome here and we're just going to search uh, Python calculator uh, and just calculator uh, just to see, uh, you know, basically how we might write a calculator. So uh, this looks good. So as you can see, in the top of the script, uh, they're defining four functions, uh, one for addition, subtraction, etc. And each one of them is going to take uh, a limit of two numbers, and it's going to return the result of the chosen mathematical equation uh, between the two numbers. So that's going to be the same for multiply, uh, divide, and everything. Uh, and here's where the actual program is going to start to output an input. So basically, it's going to say select an operation, and it's going to tell you what each number is equal to. And then it's going to create a variable called choice, and it's going to use an input function, which basically allows the user to uh, type something and then hit enter, and whatever they type is going to be stored in choice. So uh, this is going to be the prompt. So this is, this is going to print out before the input. So basically, uh, it's going to say enter choice, one, two, three, or four, and then whatever uh, the user types after that becomes, uh, it's going to be stored in the variable choice. Uh, and then they're creating two other uh, variables, uh, the first number and the second number, and for each it's going to ask uh, you to enter the number. So uh, first you enter the type of math you're going to be doing, and then you enter the first number, and then you enter the second number, and once you hit enter here, what it's going to do, it's got everything it needs, so it's going to use an if-else statement to determine what your choice was to, uh, so that it knows what function to call with the two numbers that you've put in, which is awesome. And uh, you guys might be really excited to build this, but we're actually going to go a few steps further. Uh, and the reason is, if we open up a calculator, you're probably going to know that I wasn't asked right off the bat what mathematical operation I want to perform. It just loads up with the number zero. And then I can type a number, so let's say 50, and then the mathematical operator, which we're going to use multiply, and then 2. We're going to hit enter, and we're going to get 100. Now, with the ending of the math equation here, you'll notice two differences between this program and the Python script in the background there. And that's that it didn't quit. And actually, we can continue to operate on the result of that first equation. If I want to add a 75, I'm going to hit plus 75 and enter. And it's going to add it to the result. Now, if I want to multiply that by 2, I just hit uh, times 2, and it's going to multiply that. So this is a, a continuous mathematical operation where uh, the Python script allows you to perform one operation, and it's limited to two numbers, and uh, it's very uh, non-efficient and, I, I guess, very simple. So uh, that's good, but we're going to go a little more advanced. So go ahead and open your IDE. What we're going to do here is uh, we are going to be using the regex library. So we're going to import regex. And then we're going to print out the name of our program, which is going to be called our magical calculator. Now, right off the bat, we're going to create two variables. So uh, previous is going to be equal to zero. And what this is going to do is the previous variable is going to hold the result of the previously uh, calculated equation. 
so we're going to set it to zero because we haven't uh, done any math yet. And then we're going to create a variable called run. And you guys can probably guess what this is going to do. Now we need to create a loop for our program. So we're going to type while run. And we're just going to call a function called perform math. So let's go up here and create a function called perform math. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is be able to accept input from the user to type in uh, something. So let's go ahead and uh, type uh, equation equals input, enter equation. And for now, we're just going to print out whatever they typed. So uh, let's go with you typed equation. Let's hit save. Now let's run this. So I'm just going to print hello world. And it says you've typed hello world. And then it drops back into uh, the prompt. So I'm going to type again, typing something. And this is going to loop forever uh, because we haven't created a way to stop it other than, you know, closing the, the terminal window or hitting stop right here. So what we're going to do now is uh, create a way to end or quit out of this uh, application. So let's go ahead and print out type quit to exit followed by a new line. So let's save that. Uh, now what we need to be able to do is if they type quit, we want to be able to you know, actually quit out of the program. So what we need to do is we need access to the run variable in here. So uh, for example, let, let me just do this first. If uh, equation equals quit, let's go ahead and set run to false else print out whatever we typed. So go ahead and save and we're going to run this. Uh, so we can type hello and what it's doing is it, this we didn't type in quit so it's not doing this instead it's doing this. Uh, so let's type in quit and it's not doing anything. Uh, so, so basically what's happening here is this is variable scope. Uh, basically to explain this, uh, this is a variable we created in the top level of our program. So not defined in any functions or anything. We are in a function here and we're trying, we're in an if statement. So we're further into the code and we've stated run equals false. Now this is not going to have any effect on this variable. It doesn't have access to it. So what we need to do first is actually uh, get that global variable into this function. The way we do that is just at the top of the function, type global and then the name of the global variable you're trying to get access to. So let's go ahead and save and restart. So you'll see we can still type in stuff, but as soon as I type quit, it actually exits. So that's what we want it to do. Now uh, let's go ahead and restart this. We're expecting equations to look like this. So how do we, uh, how can we do that? Well, let's ask actually, how can we do that without creating a, uh, a limiting set of functions that will perform operations? What if we wanted to do this, you know, uh, or what if we wanted to do this? Uh, in the script that we just looked at, this wouldn't be possible because uh, we can only use uh, two numbers and they're each collected in their own variable. So what we're going to do is we are going to use a built-in function. So actually what I'm going to do is uh, grab access to the previous global variable as well. 
we're going to set previous here equal to equation. And then if we go ahead and rerun this, well, we see it still says you've typed 82 or you've typed, you know, whatever the equation was. So we want this to perform math. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a built-in function uh, called eval. So let's go ahead and type that here, eval. And then let's save. Let's restart. And you're going to see that before it prints out uh, the result or whatever we've put in, it's going to evaluate it. And so this is going to be able to perform complex mathematical operations from strings. So we can literally type in 80 uh, times 100 plus 42, take away 10 plus 78 times 142. We hit enter and it calculates that up. Uh, and it does it in the correct order. So we all know that multiplication happens before addition and the evaluate statement uh, or function actually is aware of that and it does that for us. You might be thinking, well, that's awesome. Why don't, uh, you know, in those basic calculator examples, why don't they just use the eval function? And the reason is because the, the eval function is actually uh, supposed to be avoided uh, because it can be dangerous. So let me show you why. I'm going to uh, print out here, hello world, and hit enter. And you'll see what happened is uh, when it evaluates, and actually if we type in Python code here, it's going to execute that. So uh, let me go ahead and set global run. See, so we can actually crash it as well. Uh, now, this is going to work as long as we assume that uh, our users are going to be performing math equations, but what if they are not? Well, because of this, we're actually going to uh, do this. So let me go ahead and equation is going to be equal to the evaluation of equation. Or actually, hold on. Oh, previous, okay. So what we need to do first is perform some regex on it. So we want them to only be entering, uh, you know, mathematical symbols or numbers. We don't want them to be able to type anything or to issue commands. So the way we do that is basically let's create uh, a new variable. Well, actually, let's assign equation equal to re.sub. And here we're going to be entering our regex. So for the sake of this, what we're going to be doing is A to Z capital A to Z, uh, and then let's say comma, periods, uh, brackets, and spaces. So there we go. So we're going to remove everything except, uh, you know, well, everything important. Let's actually go ahead and also remove the colons. Uh, we're going to replace it with nothing. We're going to do this to equation. So let me go ahead and show you what I mean. So we're going to rerun this and I'm going to say, hello, six world. What happens is it's going to strip everything out of that before it evaluates it. So it's only going to accept numbers or, uh, as you can see, uh, you know, the plus symbol. Oh, sorry, plus right there. Let me remove that. All right. There you go. So 5 plus 11 times 2. 27 because 11 times 2 is 22 plus 5 equals 7 so we've already got an awesome calculator but it doesn't look quite right so what we're going to do is we're basically just going to put uh, an if statement it's only going to ask for you to enter equation if there's no previous so what we're going to do is uh, if actually actually create equation here We're going to go ahead and say if 
previous is let's just say equals zero. It's gonna input that. Otherwise, the equation is gonna be equal to input uh, just the previous. So I convert it to a string. There we go. So let me go ahead, and the first time it's going to ask for an equation, so 4 plus 3, and then it's going to drop down, uh, and we can go minus 1, and you'll see that it doesn't quite work. So what we need to do is uh, we need to tell it if it is, uh, uh, let me separate this here, there. We want to evaluate it separately if it's, uh, a previous, if there's a previous result or not. So what we need to do is uh, let's go ahead and if previous equals zero, we're actually going to do this, which is going to only evaluate whatever we type in. Else, previous is going to be equal to evaluate. Uh, I'm going to convert it to string previous plus equation. So let's go ahead and save. Restart. We're going to go 4 plus 4 equals 8. Take away 2. It's going to be 6. Times 10 is going to be 60. And you can see that we're actually using uh, different types of math on it. So 6 plus 5, take away 2, plus 3. 66. So this is what we want, but let's just remove where it says uh, you typed, because we no longer need that. Three take away two is one plus 56, and you can see that now we can really get into the math here. You can even type. Uh, oh, hold on. Let me start that again. Uh, so you can perform basically any mathematical operation here. Then when you're done, just hit quit. Now we want it to give a specific message uh, when it quits. So let's just uh, drop down here and have it print out Goodbye, human. Let's go ahead and run it. And when we type quit, you'll see now it says goodbye, human, and then it closes. So this is actually a completely uh, valid program. And it looks a lot different from the other example that we uh, looked at. Uh, now, the eval, fluctuation, uh, the eval function can be dangerous okay it very well can be and that's why what we're doing before we evaluate anything is we're making sure there's no letters and there's none of these characters in it because if there were uh you know somebody could uh, uh let me uh open up this here i can't do that okay uh somebody could uh you know, if they import the system uh, and the OS uh, modules that are included in Python, they could end up damaging their system. And so uh, by using regex to remove all that before it's evaluated, we're keeping things safe. So thank you guys for joining me and uh, congratulations on finishing the second section of this course. Uh, in the next section, in the next uh, bunch of videos, we're going to be learning more advanced concepts and uh, we're going to be developing more co complicated programs than this.